it looks good. Our plate is clean. Put it the right way up would help. That's better. That's the closed position, that's the open position. Place these blades. Alright, there's our donor mechanism plate assembled. Here is our original our original uh, case. And the question is Will the shutter work correctly? And here's your answer. Nice and free. So, nothing wrong with our case and plenty wrong with our original mechanism plate. Very interesting. Right, I'm happy with the condition of those components. I'll pop that to one side. I want to inspect our mechanism plate more closely. This is our original one and the one that is no good. As I've said, almost certainly the cause of the problem will be that the camera has been dropped on its nose, crushing the shutter effectively. Often there is no obvious sign on the outside of the camera that that has happened, and it's because the camera was probably in its leather case at the time, and failing that the camera was not in its leather case, but it was dropped on a carpeted floor. And so often it leaves no marks on the lens at all, nothing to suggest that there'd been a problem. But a problem has certainly been there and a problem was left behind. Now I'm just going to run a stray hedge over this and see if I can pick any obvious problem with that mechanism plate. Of course I probably can't because we only need it to be crushed a minute amount and that would account for our problems. It certainly does look like it's been pushed down in the centre. Yeah. It's very, it's tiny. If there's a distortion there, it's tiny. It's very hard to pick. Where we have it, a, an unexpected problem. One good thing came out of it. The donor shutter that got destroyed 
has a very good main drive spring in it. So, very head. We were looking for a decent spring, now we've got one. I can go back to this shutter and finishing it up. So I'll check that I'm happy with the fix of that, that diaphragm. That seems to be very good. And the shutter blades, they're just, that's absolutely perfect. That's exactly what we should have had from the start. Check that all our screws are up tight. Now I think I can pop our springs on the back of that uh, shutter and then we can reassemble the front components. No, not just yet. I'll get my springs back in place. And have I done? I'm looking for these tweezers, that toothpick. I'll zoom in a bit. Start getting all these tiny components back in place. I hold a toothpick over that post that I've just put that spring over so that it can't zoom off into the distance. When I fail to swing it correctly over the post. So I'm trying to grip a tiny spring with a pair of tweezers or the end of a tiny spring and manipulate that tiny end over obstacles and behind something else. And all the while the spring is wanting to go the other way. That's it. So I'd say this uh, camera was a bit of a lemon really for the purchaser. I'd already discovered that somebody had poached the prism out of it, probably to make improve another one. And now it's obvious why they chose to poach the prism out of this camera and not just repair this camera because this camera had serious issues. Alright, this spring is on that funny screw post arrangement, so I've got to get it onto the screwdriver first. Normally I jam it onto the screwdriver so that I've got some way of holding it. And then I can get it into position. Check that that lever is free to move, and it is. Hook that spring back around the right side of that lens tube. That's good. So those two springs are in place, doing their jobs. The setting lever for the flash sync speed or depth of um, self timer, delay action. This can go back on. I'm just wiping that clean. And close those shutter blades. Where are these? That's in the open position. I'll just lift up the B lever, drop the blades back into park. That's good. 
and that mechanism plate I've just cleaned it I haven't put any molybdenum in the two or three little spots that needs it so I'll do that now Where are we? This one. Let's get this in place. Just a sweep in there would be good. And a touch on that detent there is good. That pin has to drop down behind that spring. That's in place. That's done. Our aperture settings lever, this piece here, check that that's clean, that has to run very smoothly because it has to run very quickly when this shutter is released and its job is to close the shutter down to the preset aperture and help if I put this the right way up I suppose. Here we have it. Three screws. And now of course I've got two and a half shutters and pieces on the desk so I've got to be careful to choose the right componentry. I'll just clean these screws to make sure they haven't got any oil on them. Not that typically you can get enough oil on a screw head to uh, cause you a problem. I suppose if they were dripping in oil you wouldn't want to transfer them back. That's good. This position I know from experience is the one our post for our spring. And this one is a simple screw. Check the action. It's nice and smooth. I can put its spring in place. goes around the post there and behind the post on the settings lever there so that the diaphragm snaps down very positively and very quickly. This spring is for our shutters settings and that fits on this way around around the outside of that post there on the inside of the flash contact and then hooks up there so when the shutter's cocked the diaphragm opens right up and the shutter blades open right up to allow you to view. And as the shutter fires, the shutter blades close completely, the diaphragm blades close down to the preset aperture, then the shutter opens and closes to make the exposure. So when you fire the shutter, the shutter closes then opens and closes to make the exposure. In between the time 
the shutter is closed, all the other actions happen like cap and plate swinging out of the way, mirror swinging up, things of that nature. Right, so we have that back together. I could put it in its outer case now I suppose. Just wondering whether that's a useful thing to do. I suppose you might just as well. Let's put it in the case. In the cases I previously noted, noted there's a bit of dust and uh, grit and stuff in it. That's not at all unusual. And it's there's nothing there that would really cause you any problem. Just checking that the release lever there for the setting the flash sink is all working. And I'll clean that surface too. Again I'm making sure that I don't leave threads of cotton behind. Um, they're easy to, easy to spot against the black mechanism plate. They're not so easy to spot against that white aluminium case like that. Alright, that looks okay. I have to get my flash contact through that tiny slot in the bottom of the case. And you have to lead the insulated plastic part of it through there first. That's it, and get the MXV lever through its slot. And make sure that everything's seated. That looks right. And fit its retainer ring. I'm looking at the retainer ring. It's absolutely nothing to suggest why they should be a problem um, except as I say they do actually fit in a recess in the outer case so they are quite well wedged in there enough. I won't be tightening it any more than that. I don't need to make it impossible for the next person. That yeah, looks good. Bits. I had my lever trapped under there. Okay. So to the assembly. My retard gear train and my self timer or delay action. I'm going to pop into some solvent, leave them to soak. And while they're soaking, I can get on to dealing with the rest of the shutter. Okay, time to put some of the internal components onto this mechanism plate, I think. So I'll start here. And these components are for the 
flash sync mechanism basically. The flash sync mechanism forms part of the uh, release mechanism because the flash when the flash is set to M to do bulbs it actually releases and triggers the bulb before it lets, releases the shutter so it's the first action to happen is the firing of the bulb on X for electronic flash the contacts don't make until the blades reach full open because electronic flash is effectively instantaneous it looks good right I'm just going to uh, Shift that screw around to the correct position. I'll continue putting this flash sync and shutter release components back in. And I'll clean them as I go using cigarette lighter fluid on a cotton bud if you're only repairing one camera or two cameras or five or ten cameras then buying cigarette lighter fluid like this venti that one is but ronson old would also be a goer Whatever you put into a zippy would be a goer. It's, it's a good way of doing it, very convenient. If you're like me and you're repairing dozens and hundreds of cameras, then you want to buy your naphtha in larger quantities, and I typically buy mine a litre at a time, and it's typically sold in the hardware. Uh, typically the paint section where they keep all the other solvents and it may be described as naphtha or it may be using some trade name instead fuelite or shellite or something like that get this return spring in place trying hard not to drop the screw if I'm going to drop it, drop it in the hole ah. now it won't come out where is it? Where is it gone? Oh, there it is. No, I have to take that last screw out just so as I can lift that one back out from the hollow it's managed to tuck itself into. Is it going down there?
this uh, screw is doing its best to cause me problems. God, it looks like I'm going to have to use two hands. Some days everything goes wrong. Cast a bit more light on the subject. working correctly. Check those screws. They're snug. The shutter release lever is here. I'm checking the state of this, make sure it's not bent. That looks fine. Considering the other fun I've had with the shutter, I'm watching for any possible hiccup now. That's good. Our main drive cam can go in place. And I'll clean this first. And inspect it closely. And as is par for the course, the camera is grizzling that the battery is tired. It's better. That looks correct. I'll put the bracket in place that holds the spring. I'll do it around this way, you might even be able to see what I'm doing. And it's spring. Be one of these. It's screw rather. Get that in place. That's good. Now we have a new and improved main drive spring, which I've taken from the one of the parts shutters I've had apart. And this one looks very good, so I want to use that. If we hold back that lever, I can 
or be open the shutter, we can. We pop this drive spring in place. I've lubricated this with just a smear of molybdenum. Um, I'm not that convinced that the lubricant does an awful lot in this position, but it's traditional to have those things well greased up. That looks good. This really wants the retard gear train and the self timer or delay action fitted. So I'll clean those and put those in place. Excuse me. Alright, get this retard gear train cleaned. You can clean things like this in, in a uh, ultrasonic cleaner. In really stubborn cases where there seem to be problems with built in with grime, I would do that. But generally speaking, working it a few times in some naphtha is all that's required to wash away any accumulated problems. Your problems are twofold. There'll be oils that have migrated there from elsewhere. That sun's causing me a problem. I'll just pull that curtain across. Oh, we've got four seasons in one day here at the moment and uh, it's either nice and warm and sunny or it's, there's a cold wind and driving rain. So I'm just blowing out any ex accumulated solvent there and I'm listening, working this and listening and watching to see how it runs. There's still solvent in there. And the delay action or the self timer, that gets the same treatment. It gets worked in the, in the solvent. Yeah, you can get accumulated oils, bits of dust and dirt. Things like that can get in amongst these gears and cause things not to run smoothly. You can also get problems with slight surface corrosion so that the, because there's almost very, very tiny forces involved in driving these devices and if the uh, teeth on those little wheels are not smooth and shiny as they should be, they don't run over each other as smooth and shiny as, as, as well as they might. And so you end up with uh, the gears not running down smoothly. That's good. Again, I'll use the puffer to blow out that solvent and with it any freight of oils or dust that it's carrying. There are various ways that you might lubricate things like this. You can probably get away pretty well with them just dry. Um, I typically lubricate them with a bit of graphite powder and work it in, blow it all out. Um, one repairer I worked with many years ago had been a watchmaker by trade and he would lubricate these gears. It's funny noise here somewhere, hang on. Hmm. 
now it's gone. He would lubricate the gears by putting a couple of drops of watch making watch oil into a container of clean naphtha and he would just simply soak them in that and then bring them out and blow the excess off and he would rely on the the fine amount of oil that was left after the naphtha had evaporated to lubricate the gears. Uh, some people would use watch oil and they would apply it as you would for the jewels of a watch with a tiny drop at each of the pivot points on the spindles of the wheels. I don't think that friction of the at the pivot points is really what slows these things down or causes problems. Um, I think it's much more likely it's the surface of the wheels themselves where they revolve over each other that causes problems. But there's more than one way to skin a cat and the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So if you meet somebody who swears blind that it's best to do it in a different way, you can judge by his results. If his results have been good, well that's obviously a valid way of doing it. But there's always more than one way of, a valid way of doing these things typically. That's fine. <coughs> I'll just blow out that uh, graphite powder. get these installed. I'll start with the self timer. It seems a little bit hesitant. I think I might have had my finger on the, uh, the lever at the time. That sounds fine now. I'm just looking at the state of the spring on this setting lever here at this end of it. It looks like it's cocked up slightly. Um, typically that's a sign that it's been forced when it didn't want to move. Uh, I don't think it's sufficiently bad that you'd need to do anything about it. I don't think it's going to cause a problem. It's just an interesting feature. Just cleaning the top surface of those two trains. They certainly show fingerprints. Um, it won't cause any problem in the way they work. 
but uh, they shouldn't be. It sounded good. I think that I'll need to adjust my speed slightly because that was a is a good drive spring and we're probably going to need more engagement of the retard gear train. Okay, we'll start there and adjustments later. That looks good. This is the main gear here that uh, cocks the shutter. That shaft runs through from the back, is cocked here, twister here, which rotates this, pulls around the cocking ring, also setting the main drive spring at the same time. And the main driver in here, well it isn't really the main driver ring at all, or the settings ring, it, uh, it does set some things. It doesn't actually cock the shutter in these shutters, but it does moderate the release action. And it needs to be timed correctly to this gear here, this pinion. And the spring hooks over that post. And it doesn't fit tight to it. So it only stays on there when it's got a bit of tension on it. That's good. And the timing of this gear here is important. I need to get that pinion round until its last tooth is over the last tooth on the curved rack. That looks good. Now, we have one little piece here, which is the latch that holds all this in place. It holds the shutter cocked after it's been cocked until it's released. And I need to get this on its post with its spring correctly positioned. That's it. The springs up. You have to get the spring on the right side of its post. Otherwise, there's no tension, and the shutter will not stay properly latched until it's released at the required instant. Our speed cam. I've cleaned that. I'm interested in running some molybdenum around the areas in the centre where it runs round that lens tube and where the other levers run on it, particularly the retard gear train um, cam, because that's what sets the speeds. So that fits on there like that. It has the retaining ring at the front, which fits on there like that. And now it should be able to cock and fire this, if I can but find the... Uh, Correct component. Cock it here. It's cocked. It's open into the viewing position. It fires. Let's set this to an eighth. See what it sounds like. 
Yeah, it didn't sound too bad. I'll go and test that. That sounds pretty good to me. What's it sound like on a 15? It did sound quite good. All right, I'll test those, and if that's good, I'm going to be assembling this back to the focus components, which we'll clean first, and then we'll get it on the body and 